Pipla the Purple Butterfly here, otherwise known as Pipla, seven on Twitter and YouTube, Pipla elsewhere or on the internet. My blog is located at purplebutterfly-pipla.blogspot.com. My soaps, Purple Butterfly Soaps, can be located at pipla.se. And my t-shirt designs, purplebutterfly-pipla.tmail.com. Here I am, make a soap with our plan. <laughs> oh, no. Ah. I'm going to have to fix this or put some kind of bonnet or something over it. It keeps snagging my hair. Yeah. And, by the way, how's it look? I retouched the edges. So, it's back to being magenta. Except for this time, instead of semi-permanent, it's permanent. So, I found a couple of things that's beneficial to that. For one, it doesn't fade and leave pink all over your pillows anymore. And... It came out kind of brownish and splotchy, and I'm going, what's going on here? And the moment I washed my hair, boom, it was vibrant, magenta, no splotches, no nothing. So basically, I learned something new. It's like you don't have to use as much, and you have to give it one extra wash. In the meantime, I have... My live water is mixed with titanium dioxide and some, um, I call it SS4 or salt solution, four ounces. In other words, table salt. It's a poor man's sodium lactate. My fragrance is water. My colorants are um, coral reef blue, which is stable in... Um, and then true blue, no, that's true blue, and deep blue, which are not, at, oh no, that's deep blue, this is true blue. This is the one that turned purple. And since they're both not stable in a high pH environment, and I have a lot of it, I figure make a soap and see what color it finally comes out. This is um, ultramarine violet. It's stable. What you see is what you get with that. Just in case you couldn't see the coral reef blue. That's the one that always looks um, like turquoise to me. What's going on with my camera? It seems to be freezing. Okay. It looks like turquoise, but it's considered to be a blue. I never could figure that out. Okay. Now, I think I'm going to go ahead and add all my um, fragrance oil to the oils. If it accelerates, it accelerates. I just felt like making a soap. I did the fragrance oil, I mean, the live water solution yesterday. I did the oils this morning. I mixed the colors up five minutes ago. And yeah, that's how we're going to work it today. I'm going to find another spoon. Or better yet, let's use a spatula. Or two. Maybe three. <laughs> I have found it very interesting that ultramarines dissolve completely in water. You know, no leftovers from like oil or whatever. But if you give it five, six minutes, it will totally settle to the bottom and become difficult to get out of there. In fact, I know exactly what I'm going to do. Just going to add some more water to that. Yeah. I 
energies distilled uh, water and my soap. So basically, if you have to add water, just go get the little bucket and, you know, or a pitcher or a bottle. The aphasia is back in a bad way, so I keep getting tangled up on my words. That happens. Life happens. You know. In the meantime, in goes the true blue that isn't true. Don't know what color it's going to end up being, but for right now, it's going in as true blue. like a navy but it's the color that turned a uh, charcoal gray in the lemon soap you give me an unstable color and I basically experiment to see what it's gonna do how it's gonna do it and so forth and so on because I'm curious that way And I love these scoy cops. See that? Now you seen all the color that was on there. Now it's on here. One wipe. Love that thing. Okay. Now. I mean. One of my goals is to, you know, be like one of my southern buddies. They literally have a bouquet of spatulas. So that way, no matter what they're using, how many colors they're using, how many um, pots, how many swirls, they don't have to wash off the spatula to add a new color, whatever. They just grab another spatula. Put them in some boiling water, water, clear them all at the same time, stick them back in the bouquet, and life goes on. It's a very efficient method. I've done that with, I mean, I have four color pots here, one big bowl here, and a um, big soap bucket for like when I'm making a five, ten pound batch. And I have literally a spatula for each of those. And just grab it, go, grab it, go. It saves you time. So I get it. But when you don't have those kind of, you know, materials available, then you just don't do it. You know what I mean? I'm making sure this is all nice and dissolved again. Because overnight... The salt crystals and the live water, you know, develop lightning and all that. So, yeah. And then the titanium dioxide in there. Titanium dioxide, especially when it's in water, tends to settle to the bottom. Here we go. Basically, I use too much salt, so it's just sitting there in the strainer. But that's fine. It's not messing up my soap, because, well, it's just sitting there in the strainer. And the part that dissolved already will still make the soap hard. This little bit is all that's left. I'm just making sure that all the liquid got in there. And I let 
a little bit, you know, if I uh, anyway. And then bring it upside down and then spray it. Get this all the debris out of there. There we go. Glasses are about to fall off my face. Titanium dioxide dispensed from water is bright white quicker compared to, you know, from oil dispensed. So I know to do that next time. Okay, let's move this out of the way. I'm thinking maybe do a five spot or a tiger swirl, maybe a drop swirl, I don't know. Like I said, there's no plan today. It's just make some soap. All I know is I want colors in varying shades of blue, apparently, <laughs> and one purple. And apparently no white, so we'll just go ahead and pour all that in. In the meantime, I think I'm going to... We'll get one of the baby power soaps and show you what that looks like right now. These are the ones that's going to go to my daughter. But as you can tell, it turned purple. That's the one that said true blue. <laughs> I don't know what color it's going to turn in this soap, but it's going to be real interesting to see. turned gray. That was the um, deep blue. The true blue hasn't turned purple yet, but and it's still staying blue. But in anticipation of it turning purple again, I have it with some ultramarine purple or ultramarine violet actually. So whatever it does is going to be a complementary color. So this is the true blue at the moment. This is the deep blue. <laughs> it's already turned a really weird color because it's not stable in a high pH environment. So let's see. I think I'm going to do like a peacock swirl type thing just because I can. And it would help if I didn't bump it into the next thing over. Okay. That's all these bubbles doing. Like I said, it don't really have a plan. I'm liking how this looks. Although I did kind of pour that a little bit fast, so it more or less landed in one place.
This looks really pretty. These bubbles are bothering me. Hold on. Making sure it's not a false trace. Because I've had that happen before. And then, yeah. I figured since that turned some weird color gray, I didn't want to accidentally get it mixed in with another color if I decide to stir it. So, another spatula to the rescue. See, I was using purple, but we'll go to, nope, I'll do, I'll join this color. Kind of won't matter, but you know, I do want to do things in a consistent manner. Overflow mode. You know, just in case. This is a little loose, so it may or may not set up the way I'm anticipating, which means the colors might decide to muddy themselves. But the whole point is to see what color it's going to end up being, seeing how two of the colors are not stable in a high pH environment, and the other two are what you see is what you get. So, you know. And I do intend to maybe put a high top on this, just not from this batch. It's like um, make a new soap batch and do the high top from that. Not to run out of real estate here. That's rather exact. I don't usually do that. Usually there's a little bit left. straight liquid throughout. I find that amazing. When I want a liquid pour, I can't get one. <laughs> when 
I was just past the multiplication, you look up and you hit um, a light trace instead, and sometimes that speeds up your batch. And when you want to trace, then you end up with the situation like that lasso where trace decelerated and then it went away. And I had to keep double checking that soap to make sure it was even getting hard. Yeah. But today, I got a completely liquid pour. Which means if I wanted to do some piping on top of this, <laughs> out of luck, sister. <laughs> See, look at that. It is still liquidy. That's fine. I got soap on my arm. Vinegar time. Keep my vinegar and my live water next to each other. Basically in a safe. Go. This thing has gone away, which means it's already neutralized the line, but I'm still going to leave it on my skin just to be sure. Yeah. Now, back to what I was doing. I mean, how dare I have an uneventful soap day? <laughs> it's not even Friday the 13th. That was yesterday. I didn't even make soap yesterday. I figured just in case there were any soap gremlins about, they weren't going to get me, not on Friday the 13th. So here we are on Saturday the 14th. <laughs> I don't get those jokes. Don't worry about it. It was for me anyway. I'm going to keep that too. Now. There we go. Now. Well, the top of that, even though it's really liquid. So we're just gonna make a little design to it. And then we're gonna come over here to this one and do a better design because that was not a good one. really liquidy. Let's hope at this point it's not a false trace. The last time I had a pour this liquidy, that's exactly what happened. And then several hours later, it had it set up and basically it was like to save it, I had to basically take a blender through it. And then 
make them look like a big old gray mask because, well, that got it for Trace, but the design was gone. It shot just no more. <laughs> Oops, I just bumped that. I spilled some of it. But that's one of the reasons why it's got a liner inside of the throat frame. You don't have to worry about it, you know, making a big old mess. Hey, what the cleanup was surprisingly easy since the pour was very, very liquid. Let me show you what I do on a normal. This is my immersion blender old school style. This is the one that didn't have the part to disconnect, like my cruising art. Just get yourself a really tall picture. Um, some people might recognize this. This is one of those instant pasta things where it had like a thermal protectant. You put hot water in it, drop your pasta in it. Seven minutes later, it's supposed to be make perfect pasta. I forget what that was called, but we have two of them, different sizes. And we decided we don't make pasta enough to go through verify, uh, justifying the cost of it, but it works well with this. Nice and clean. Then I just leave that in there. A lot of times if I have a soap that's very, very thick, I just leave it there for the overnight, and then when I hit the stick blender, all nice and clean. Okay, we're going to need to move this. This one part of the counter literally lifts up, so it's not a flat surface anymore. So that's when you move everything over a little bit. In fact, I'm going to turn it around. That way the part that was leaning over the top has a place to set up. Yeah. Anyway, this has been People of Seven on Twitter and YouTube. People are elsewhere on the internet. My blog is located at purplebutterfly-people.blogspot.com. My soaps, purple butterfly soaps, can be located at people.etsy.com. And my t-shirt design, purplebutterfly-people.tmail.com. Y'all stay blessed and stay tuned. While it's still all nice and liquidy, gonna add some down and some hot water and get it all nice and soapy, soapy clean. Y'all stay blessed, stay tuned. Bye now. So let's hope the soaps came out looking a lot better than it did going in. Because uh, you seen the beautiful colors I put in there. This, hold on. Is what's in the pot or in the moat rather and it's still very liquidy might be a false trace I don't know yet but in the meantime it looks so blah so I'm hoping when it's time for the cut it looks more like ooh la la <laughs> in the meantime easiest bit of dishwashing I've ever had to do there's everything's liquidy basically I just hit it with the sprayer everything literally rinsed away completely then I put some Dawn in there added some more uh, water got a lather going and in about 20 minutes I'll just go clean everything up yeah but yeah that's what happens when you soak without a plan. You got to have a idea of what design you want to do. Um, 
you just need a plan. That's like, I knew I wanted to make soap. I could see um, the purple that's from the ultramarine violet in there. And you can see some of the green. And if you look over here with the overflow, you see right there where that pink is? That's the um, true blue that turned purple. And the deep blue is still gray. The coral reef blue is the turquoise you see. And then the ultramarine violet is ultramarine violet. It's going to be a purple. But in the meantime, I've already tested. Um, I stuck a little right there. I just kind of like went like this. So, yeah, it is setting up. It's not a false trace. And it's going to be a hard soap because of the ingredients. I was just make sure it wasn't a false trace. So that way, when it's time to cut it, we can see all the stuff that's going to be popping inside this soap. Because, um, yeah, the way it's already going through this color change, which means when it hits gel, it's going to be really spectacular. I'm wondering if I should do a high top on it or not. Um, but I did make a decision on that. I can do the high top after the soap is already set up. So that way I don't even have to worry about trying to do piping on soap that's sinking you know like when the flowers sunk <laughs> that was just so disheartening but yeah so i'm going to save this and attach it to the first video so that way we can see what it looks like from the cut too this has been people of seven y'all stay blessed bye now